this is the first and most important step and yet it's skipped over by most people who try to lose weight. What do you want for yourself? What is the real reason that you want to lose this weight? Why is it so important to you? Losing weight or being healthier or um, living longer are all very rational, good reasons to change, but they're not very motivating because they're too abstract. What we really need to motivate us and keep us on the right path is a very specific and emotionally charged why. You need a vision, a dream, um, something that's going to guide you through and motivate you to keep going to the end of your weight loss journey. So ask yourself, what specifically is your reason for wanting to change? Why is it that you want to lose weight? If you're not really totally sure, if when you think it up, you're kind of like, it's fuzzy, um, an easy exercise to help you kind of clarify what you do want for yourself is to imagine yourself one year in the future at your goal weight. What's different? What is the biggest benefit that your new life provides you? Spending some time writing this out and thinking about this is a great way to help you clarify what it is you really want. I'm also gonna have a link in the description box um, to a worksheet that you can complete that will have a bunch of different questions along these lines, as well as um, along the lines of some of the other questions in the video that will help you really clarify and get you started on the right foot. Setting goals during your weight loss journey is essential for your success, but setting behavioral goals is where real success lives. If your goal is to lose 100 pounds this year, that works out to like eight and a half pounds a month or about two-ish pounds per week. The problem is you can do absolutely everything right and not lose 100 pounds this year. That's because weight loss is an outcome. It's not a behavior, it's not a process, and that means it's not totally in your control. Control. So it can be extremely demotivating if you do every single thing right and then you fall short of this goal. So demotivating that you may give up entirely even though you're truly making a ton of progress. I literally can't even tell you how many times during my weight loss journey that I would work as hard as I possibly could for two weeks, then I would step on the scale, see a weight that I didn't like, and feel so crappy that I was like, okay, well, I'm ordering pizza then. So instead, we wanna focus on what we can control, and that is our behavior. Figure out and write down the key behaviors that you are going to need to reach your goal. Like eat X amount of calories per day, go to the gym X amount of times per week, not snack while watching TV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever the behaviors are that are keeping you from your dream body or whatever, this is what we need to figure out and write down and shoot towards changing. Look for the behaviors that need to be added or removed from your life to get you to your ultimate goal and then track your progress on them every single day. Limit sugar, refined carbs, and fast food. There are no hard and fast rules to weight loss. And yes, you can lose weight eating sugar, refined carbs, and fast food. You totally can. But these foods make it a lot harder to lose weight. They ramp up your appetite, they limit your ability to burn fat, and they activate areas in the brain linked to addiction. Not to mention the effects they have on your metabolism post weight loss. I definitely encourage you as part of your weight loss project to learn as much as you can about what you are putting in your body because once you kind of have some ammunition about what this kind of stuff does, where it comes from, how it's made, um, and the effects it really does have on your body, it's a lot easier to say no to those things. And pay attention to your body if you do eat them. You'll probably notice a marked difference between how you feel when you're eating foods like that and when you're eating more unprocessed whole foods. At the same time, there's no reason to enforce any absolute rules. You're not banned from sugar and bread and pasta for the rest of your life. It's just about choosing to reduce them particularly from your day-to-day -day diet to make it easier on yourself to lose weight. These foods are usually low in essential nutrients anyway, while also being high in calories. Reducing them will leave you with a lot more room for more nutritious calories gonna, that are gonna help you feel more full and get you closer to meeting your daily vitamin goals while in a deficit.
get an idea of your total daily energy expenditure. I'll provide you with a link in the description to one that I find to be pretty accurate. Buy a food scale, download a food tracking app, and make tracking part of your new lifestyle. There is a ton of research to suggest that tracking your food helps to keep you on track with your weight loss goals. And part of this is probably just about raising your level of awareness of what you are actually eating every single day. Daily tracking also provides you with built-in structure and accountability to your weight loss journey, and also provides an easy way for you to see if you are hitting one of your behavioral goals. Willpower is bullshit. I know because I was there too, and honestly, even to this day, I wouldn't say I have a ton of willpower, and yet I've managed to lose 100 pounds. Remove all temptation from your life. Throw out everything that you're gonna be tempted to overeat on, that's gonna take you away from your goals, that's not what you want to be putting in your mouth, or this anything that's even just too easy to snack on. And if you can't throw out all this stuff because the food's not yours, ask your family members or whoever you're living with to help you by putting a lock on it or hiding their foods. Delete the apps that you usually use to order food. Um, you can even download, I'm sure, an app to block those apps from going back on your phone so you can't get into them at all. <laughs> the possibilities are really endless and obviously would be customized to your unique situation and what kind of things you're typically overeating on. But the best willpower trick in the world is just to avoid, avoid, avoid. <laughs> you will exponentially increase your odds of success by preparing for inevitable obstacles in your life. Take a look at your key behaviors that you wrote down in part one or part two um, and write out potential obstacles to performing these actions. For example, if one of your goals is to always take your lunch to work, and you know that you're going to need to be prepared with your lunches already made on the weekend or whenever, the night before, and this is something that you're gonna to have to start scheduling into your life. Or if you know you're going to be going to um, a restaurant on the weekend, then you can research the place that you're going in advance to find something that hit that works with your calorie goal for the day. If you Google exercise and weight loss right now, you're gonna find a ton of articles that basically say it's not correlated with weight loss or it has nothing to do with weight loss. Apparently the science doesn't support that exercise has anything to do with losing weight. The argument being that exercise just doesn't burn that many calories and you'd have to slog three hours on a treadmill just to burn off a Big Mac. However, working out does result in important changes to your hormones. It improves insulin sensitivity, reduces cortisol, and is linked to increased amounts of growth hormone, all which are linked to weight loss. While you're losing weight, your metabolism is gonna be slowing down as a response to you dieting and your new smaller body size. But research actually suggests that exercise, in particular building up lean muscle mass on your body, can help you kind of negate some of these effects. Based on this and the fact that we need to consider your long-term energy balance um, when we're thinking about how you're gonna maintain this weight loss after you're done, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend making it a top priority to find a form of exercise that you enjoy during this process. While you're losing weight, um, it's very, very helpful to have symbiotic goals in the form of other things like exercise or water intake or anything like that. And exercise helps on a hormonal level, as I mentioned, as well as kind of just reshaping your view of yourself as someone who's a more healthful individual. Find some sort of exercise that you enjoy and make it a consistent habit. Everything counts and being sedentary is completely deadly. If you can't imagine yourself sticking to the diet that you're on for the rest of your life, that is a huge red flag that this diet is not for you. And in all likelihood, you will return to your previous way of eating very, very quickly. Your diet should never be made up of foods that you hate. It shouldn't be so restrictive that you're planning your first cheat day. And it shouldn't be a temporary way of eating until you lose X amount of pounds. These are all massive signs that this diet is not the right diet for you and will result in weight rebound or simply giving up on your diet before you're done. Your main goal here is to find a new healthful way of eating that you love and that you can stick to forever. That is probably my best tip I can give you when it comes to adhering to your diet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Um, 
you can find the link to the worksheet I mentioned in the description box. I highly recommend doing it or something like it to really get yourself pumped up to lose this weight this year. Also, if you want to follow me on the rest of my weight loss journey, I have about 25 to 30 pounds to go and I will be sharing my research and tips and all that kind of stuff on this channel.